Hey everyone, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, I've done something this time that I've never done before. I recorded my entire process making an animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I do it step by step. So I'm going to first pick a panel from my comic book Savar that I think is exciting and interesting. I'm going to grab this one of uh, Alethea like jumping, uh, bursting through a door. I'm going to cut it out to isolate it and make sure I don't mess up my original file to create a new file with it and I'm going to cut away the unnecessary stuff. I'm just going to black it out. Now the first step you have to do is you've got a pen tool around the things that you want to turn into new layers and there's no way around it. There's no workaround. There's no magic tool that can do this for you. You've just got to go around it with the pen tool so you can cut it out. Pen tool is the best way to do this. Now, you want to stay inside the lines when you're pen tooling around these objects. Uh, it's okay to be inside. When you go inside, you're going to create the form that you want your viewers to see. If you go outside, uh, people are going to notice. So I'm skipping some of the hairs and some of the detail, but nobody will notice. Uh, and then I'm going to get to the end and I'm going to close my path. There you go, close the path. And now right away I'm going to start and I'm going to cut out the hand. I don't have to save the path quite yet. I'm going to make a new path around this hand. And if you've got it selected properly, this is going to uh, be part of the same path. So you go over to paths, that work path, you want to save it so you don't lose it. So double click on it and give it a name. I'm going to call it which. And now you can select it. And you can use that selection and cut out the background. All right, now the way I'm cutting is Command X, and then to paste, Command Shift V is going to paste into the exact same position as it was before. This is important because I'm trying to recreate the panel that Andre drew. Now I'm going to cut out Alethea. I'm going to go around with a pen tool. Again, it just takes time, it takes a lot of time. Uh, save that path, turn it into a selection. Command X to cut it, Command Shift V to make a same, the, a same, the same layer in the exact same place. Now these pieces of wood, I'm not going to use the pen tool, I'm just going to use the lasso and lasso around them because they're going to be moving, they're going to be animated, and you're not really going to see if it's not perfect. As long as you stay inside the line, people won't notice. Okay? If you go outside the line, people are going to notice. So I'm going to lasso around each element that I want to animate and then I'm gonna command X to cut it out and command shift V to paste back into the same location now it's got its own layer you can see the layer right there gotta do that for every element so now all these uh, pieces of wood are getting their own layers and then I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna grab these guys with the lasso and cut them out. It's tedious, it's time consuming, but you've gotta do it. But now you see the dilemma here is that once you've cut everything out, you've got these big holes that you have to fill. So my method of covering up these gaps is to go big, all right? I don't like to use a brush or a clone stamp tool. People are gonna notice. So what I tend to do is I grab big chunks of image and then I just transform them I slide them or, and I copy them and paste them and flip them. So here I go, I've just made a new layer out of that big chunk of wall by using Command J after I selected it. And then I'm just stretching it. Now I'm going to hit Command J again to make a copy. Then I'm going to go up to uh, Edit, Transform. I'm going to flip it horizontal first. And, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to transform, flip vertical. And now I've got the same thing, but on the other side, to cover up that hole. I've got those huge holes I've got to cover up. And then the next step is to get a soft brush, create a mask, and use black, because black conceals, and then you mask off those really hard edges. So this is tedious, it's time consuming, but you've just got to go through it and mask off the hard edges so people don't notice, but still keep uh, keep everything covered up. Now I'm going to go in, I'm going to create a, a curves layer here and link it and try to get the color to match so that it's a little bit more even. Okay, You're doing a lot of 
lot of different uh, panels. This is only like a seven second animation, so you try to work fast. You're not trying to get it perfect, you're trying to work fast. Now I want to cover up those pieces of wood, the splinters in the middle, so I'm going to copy merged and just grab a new big chunk. Like I said, I like to use big chunks instead of using the clone stamp tool, especially at first. Uh, I'm going to flip that around and cover up those pieces of wood. And then i got to create a mask for this. Go down there, create a mask, and then cover up the rough edges with a soft brush using black because black conceals, white reveals. So that's how I deal with backgrounds. But how do you deal with elements that have pieces missing. Like if I take this rock and cut it out, then there's going to be a chunk of Alethea's hand that's missing. This happens all the time. So let me show you how I deal with it. So I've made a blank layer underneath this knife. All right, you can see it there, layer 16. It's right underneath the Alethea layer. Now I'm making a selection underneath. Now I'm going to go grab the foreground color and select what's on the top of the knife, the color on top of the knife. Take the background color, select what's on the bottom of the knife, then take the gradient tool and go between them. So now I've put color behind Alethea and behind the knife. And now I make a mask and I'm brushing away the Alethea layer. Now it's not gonna look good because it's too perfect, so I've got to add some noise with the noise filter. And then I've got to brush away the, I've got to mask out a little bit of the top layer so that that bottom layer that I made shows through. Here, I'm going to, I'm going to mask out a little bit more, mask out that red and orange spot right there. And now it's back to one piece. Now it looks perfect. So I'm, now I'm going to merge down so that that becomes one layer. And I've got one problem remaining. Alethea's got this huge chunk missing out of her. So I'm going to look at the other pages of my comic book and find some similar textures and colors. And I'm going to put them in behind her. Again, you're, you're working behind the element that you need to fix. So I found this piece of her cape. It's kind of the same color. It's the closest I can find. And I'm going to just adjust it and keep fitting it in. This is the part that the Elbows Witch was covering, and it might show during the animation, right? You can't just leave this, like, huge chunk missing. So I put the cape behind. I cut away the pieces of the cape and the pieces of Alethea's clothing that I don't need, and I blend it together using the same technique, right? The same technique, which is you put the new piece of material underneath, then you make a mask on Alethea, and then you go in there with a soft brush, and you brush it away so that it blends together. Uh, it's time consuming. I'm using a Wacom tablet that's pressure sensitive. That makes it a lot easier. I don't know that you could do this without it. And you just keep working it, blending it, and adjusting uh, adjusting the pieces until they fit. I'm going to put that edge of Alethea's cape back in. That was there before and that looked nice. So we're going to put that back in. And then I'm going to stretch the piece of cape, the piece of cape underneath so that it gets close to matching. And I can get it lined up pretty well. People aren't going to see this probably for more than like a hundredth of a second, but you can't have background showing. You can't just have white or black or nothing there. You gotta have something there. We still have pieces of the background missing. Even if I uh, put all the elements on, I'm gonna be moving that witch and there's that huge hole there. So I'm gonna take a square marquee copy merged. It's just going to copy everything and I'm going to slide it over to fill that hole where the witch was. And I'm going to stretch it. The witch is going to be covering this so 
it's not vital that it's perfect, but you still have to fill everything up. Because when you're doing animation, stuff's going to move around. And every once in a while, the background's going to peek out. So now I've got a bunch of invisible layers of uh, splinters and wood. I'm going to go and turn them all on. And because I've copied them back in place with Command Shift V, when I put them back in place and put Alethea and the Witch back in place, it should look exactly the way it did before I cut it out. So this is exactly what uh, Anang and Andre drew and colored, but now it's all separate. I said I was going to cut out that hand, so I'm just going to use the lasso tool, cut out the hand, and Command Shift V and put it on its own layer. And now every element that I want to animate is separate. So that's how I cut out my scenes and put them back together again. Uh, I can go on and show you exactly how I'm going to animate this in the next tutorial. So thanks so much for spending the time with me. And I love to show you this stuff. Can't wait to show you the next tutorial. Bye.